I am honored to be seated among you today on this issue. Speaking from personal experience, I came into office last year with a clear vision and practical action plan that included a six government six pillar government program that has the potential to transfer Somalia into a vibrant and prosperous nation. But soon I come to re realize the most significant issues constraining Somalia's development and progress is not lack of elaborate planning, but rather the exclusion from global financing. Within the global economic environment that we live in today, countries like Somalia, which had the misfortune of going through a period of civil war and instability, will always have a harder time to get back on the track of recovery. On the other hand, the stable nations have been able to continuously invest in their development through economic uh, domestic revenues or borrowing. On the other hand, even as we are effectively engaged in economic reform to achieve debt relief and are empowering, uh, improving our domestic revenue mobilization, public financial management, and the good governance, our growth is still stable. For the past three decades, Somalia was not only not allowed to borrow to bankroll development, we were incurring charges from non-payment of existing loans. Thank you. Under these circumstances, fragile conflict affected states like Somalia need special facilities to finance economic reforms and recovery and to be able to respond to the emerging drivers of fragility such as climate change. I strongly believe that the African Development Bank commitment to Africa's development, deep understanding of African continent and it is development challenges as well as it is broad network of relationship actors and across the world constitute some of the bank's comparative advantage that can be leveraged to empower national and regional institutions to effectively respond to the emerging challenges